Hi everyone, I'm Cheryl and welcome to the Sewing Room channel. I'm going to show you how to make a beautiful star-shaped table topper. Now this one I made out of fall fabrics. It has pumpkins on it. But let me show you the one for Christmas. Isn't that beautiful? So again, you can make this for any season. Use any colors that you like. All of the cutting instructions and the supplies you need are listed below your YouTube screen in the description section. Okay, let's get started. This pattern will only take a few seconds to draw, so you need to cut a piece of paper that is exactly nine and a half inches wide by 16 inches long. Take your 16 inch edges and line them up and be very careful that you line everything up exact. Then press. Now you're going to fold it one more time. Fold it over and make sure all your edges together and then press. These are the two folded edges. Take your ruler and place it on the two opposite corners. And again, be careful that you line everything up exact, making sure that it's lined up really good. And then cut. Then unfold it, and then here is your pattern. Take your selvage edges and bring them together. And then fold it in half one more time. Take your pattern and place it and you can either pin the pattern down or use weights and then using a rotary cutter go around all four edges. Then unfold your fabric and remember this is all cut out. Then you're going to place it over here Put your weights on and then cut out your last two pieces. To cut the sashing strips, take your selvage edges and fold them together. Then fold the fabric one more time. So then place your folded edge of your fabric on one of the lines on your cutting mat and we're going to cut this edge straight. So slide it past the line on your cutting mat and I like using a rotary cutter because it's a lot more accurate. And then cut this edge straight. Then move it over two inches and cut. Don't move your fabric. Move it over two inches again and continue cutting until you have nine strips. Then you're going to begin stitching the strips onto your center fabric right here, the main fabric. And you're going to make sure that you cut it longer than the width out here. So you want a, a couple of inches out on each edge. So then you lay it down on the edge and stitch across one quarter inch seam. And then you unfold it and press and then take your ruler and trim it straight with this edge. And you're going to do this on two opposite edges. Now you're going to do the remaining two opposite edges and again have a few inches hanging out on each side here. Stitch it across one quarter inch, press it, unfold and press. Then line your ruler up on the edge and cut it straight across. Then go to the other edge and do the same thing. Now take three of your blocks and you're going to stitch them together. So you want to bring it front sides together like this and line it up. Pin and stitch a one quarter inch seam. Then press this seam, unfold and press again. Then do the same thing on this side, front sides together, stitch a quarter inch seam, unfold and then press. 
after these three are stitched together, then take the next three and stitch them together separate from this. I'm using fusible interfacing, any weight you want to use. I recommend either a light or medium weight fusible interfacing, and mine is made by Pellon. I bought it at Walmart. You can also get it at Joanne Fabrics and Crafts. If you're going to use cotton batting, you have to understand you need to do quilting stitches in order to keep it all together. I'm not demonstrating how to do the cotton batting. I'm only doing the interfacing or fusible fleece. Your interfacing and fleece come in 20 inch width. So cut a piece that's long enough that will cover each end here. And then you're going to lay it down. Now, you're not going to have enough for this little corner. But when you cut all this out, take a little piece and put it down in the corner and fuse it on. So as I said, lay it down and then cut around and then fuse it on following package instructions. And you do it on both sections. Now take both sections and bring them front sides together and line up this center seam area right here and then stitch a one quarter inch seam across here. After stitching, then always press your seam on the back side and then unfold it and press it on the top side. And I just press my seam to in one direction, but if you want, you can press the seam open. Place the fabric that's for the very back of the table topper. Place it down first. With, if there's a print on it, make sure the print side is facing up. If it's just plain fabric, it doesn't matter. Then place your table topper face down. Then go ahead and place pins around all the edges and then trim the excess back fabric off all the way around. Before you stitch this all closed, you need to indicate an area that you're going to leave open so that you can turn this front side out. So put two pins on one side and then one pin on the other side. And you'll always back stitch on each side of the opening. So I'm going to start here, back stitch, and go down to this corner. When I'm a quarter inch away from this edge, leave your needle down, turn your fabric, and continue stitching. So do that at all corners. Stitch all the way around, and it's a one quarter inch wide seam. When you come to the two pins, then back stitch. On all the points like this, you want to cut some of it off to where it's about an eighth of an inch wide. I also like to trim just a little bit more off of the sides. This helps to make the point lay flatter. Then at all the sections that come in like this, you want to do a cut straight in right up to the stitch line, but don't cut through your stitch line. This will make that corner lay flatter. Now reach in your opening and begin to turn it front side out. Now reach back in through your opening and poke all of your corners out. Then you want to give this a good pressing. Make sure all your edges are flat. While you're pressing, fold those opening edges inside a quarter inch, press along there, put a few pins to hold. And then after doing all your pressing, then you want to go ahead and stitch about an eighth of an inch away from the edge all the way around all of the sides. So here's the one for Christmas that you watch me make, and then here's one that I did in fall fabrics. So you can do it for any holiday season, in fact, any season of the year. Well, I hope this tutorial was helpful to you. If you're interested in other table toppers, table runners, placemats, anything for your table, check below your YouTube screen and you will see links appearing down there. As you scroll down, click on the words show more and then the links will appear. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and check out my Facebook page. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time and happy sewing. 
If you like the Sewing Room channel, one of the best ways to show your support is to subscribe by clicking on that red subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. And don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. And make sure you click on the bell so you receive notifications for all my new videos. I'm Cheryl, this is Manny, and this is Scotty. See you next time.